。いらした、しまいしましょう。In March 2011, the world watched in awe and horror as a colossal tsunami ravaged eastern Japan. The result of a 9.0 magnitude earthquake. Entire cities were washed away. Millions stranded without power or water. 15,000 died. It was an otherworldly event, thousands of miles away. Thank goodness, many of us thought. It couldn't happen here. But it could happen here. In fact, scientists say it's a question of when, not if, a devastating earthquake, followed by a huge tsunami, strikes the continental United States, right here in the Pacific Northwest. This would be like five or six Katrinas all at once, up, up and down from California to,、uh, to Canada would be the closest thing I can think of. It may sound like a Hollywood disaster movie. I see it! But it's not. This is the future for the region's seven million people, says Chris Goldfinger, a paleo seismologist at Oregon State University. In fact, his research shows much of the region is overdue for a major quake. The last one was back in 1700, long before there were large cities right in harm's way. If it happens anytime soon, it would just, just devastate the area. Goldfinger estimates there's a one in three chance the quake will strike sometime in the next 50 years. Would you say that we're prepared for something like this? We're not completely unprepared, but、uh, we're pretty darn close. On a scale of one to ten, we're probably a little shy of one at this point.、Uh, this is Ground Zero, the 700 mile long area off the Pacific coast called the Cascadia Subduction Zone, where the North American tectonic plate meets another plate known as the Juan de Fuca. The dark image we're seeing here is literally sliding under the lighter image. That's right. So they're converging but still stuck.、Mm -hmm. And so what happens is the weaker plate, which is North America, buckles. And eventually something's going to give. So the coastline that's been jacked up over 500 ish years or so is going to drop about a meter、uh, in about a minute or so. And that's just the earthquake. Next, as we saw in Japan, comes a tsunami. With waves as high as 50 feet roaring on shore, reaching miles inland. It's a threat the government says it's taking seriously. But is FEMA ready for the big one? I would never say we are ready. Ken Murphy is the administrator for FEMA Region 10. These represent the roads、uh, that can be affected by the earthquake or out here on the coastline can be affected by the tsunami. The agency has spent years preparing the federal response. FEMA's best case scenario 10,000 dead. And that's assuming no beach tourists, which would lead to their worst case scenario simply too terrifying to contemplate. Depending on when it happens, we're, we're talking numbers that、uh, this nation, I'm not sure, is really prepared to deal with. Potentially the greatest natural disaster this country has ever experienced? I would say it has the potential、uh, for that.、Uh, this is an event you send everything to and scale back down if you don't need it. The quake could displace a million people from Northern California to Southern Canada. Large parts of Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver will crumble. In coastal towns, roads and bridges will likely be impassable, stranding whole communities. The region's economy could collapse. Rebuilding might take years, even decades. And few places are more at risk than this one. It's Seaside, Oregon's school complex. 1,500 students in four aging buildings. Superintendent Doug Dockerty. The structural engineers tell us that a vast majority of the building will collapse in a seismic event. Three of Seaside's four schools 
are also in the tsunami zone. In fact, its high school is just feet away from the Pacific Ocean. The students and staff, if they are able to evacuate, Earthquake start. have between 15 and 20 minutes to get to high ground, 1.3 miles. And that's one of those other pieces that uh, keeps me awake at night. 100 miles to the north in Westport, Washington, Acosta Elementary is another school with seemingly no way out. So it built its own way out. Doing a great job. Straight up. A new school building currently under construction offers safe and high ground right on its roof. It's the country's first vertical evacuation structure with walls 44 feet high and 14 inches thick. Run as fast as you can, get up into the tsunami safe area. Superintendent Paula Ackerlin says voters approved an additional $2 million for the emergency structure. The community, you know, they were looking at the safety of not just their children now, but generations in the future. This is not an affluent community, so it's a huge commitment. Other evacuation plans and seismic upgrades are taking place, but not nearly fast enough, say the experts. Back at Seaside, Oregon, three years ago, the school district did try moving all its students to a new campus. But when they found out it would take an 18% property tax increase, the voters rejected the measure by a margin of almost two to one. Were you surprised? Oh, I was not only surprised, but heartbroken. It's just very, very expensive for our local citizens to uh, foot the bill entirely. I hope people don't uh, understand the implications of their decisions because that would basically be writing off an entire school district student population. With no money from the state or the federal government, Doug Dougherty says he's planning to retire and work for another ballot campaign for a new campus. As for Oregon State's Chris Goldfinger, he continues to warn about a disaster that science says is just a matter of time. This is going to scare a lot of people. Well, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. If you're really well prepared and the infrastructure is hardened, that can be the end of it. If you don't plan at all, it's going to be a catastrophe. And then uh, uh, there's, there's just nothing you can do about that.